All of the people who are sitting here, there's a whole pile of desserts over there in the corner. And what you have here are poll workers who have come in from the cold, so to speak. Uh, what we're hearing is that the turnout's been heavy uh, today. I don't have any numbers, but I'm sure we'll get some of those soon. Um, this is the district where we're going. To, it's the third congressional district. That is Congressman Tom uh, MacArthur's district. Also, uh, Chris Smith is going to be here. He's a representative from the fourth district. Uh, we're expecting both of them to show up. And also, we've been told Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadano is going to be here tonight. Uh, there is another room called a war room, which is uh, adjacent here and we're not in that room but we will be updating you throughout the evening with information uh, bringing people to talk to you and letting you know what's going on so stand by and we'll be back in just a minute in the meantime we're gonna let the camera roll
29 in Manhattan late this morning. It's just a few blocks, of course, from Trump Tower in New York Hills in Midtown, where the Trump team will be watching the return. Let's just get to Joe Tui, who is live inside Trump's election night headquarters. Now, the crowd behind me is subdued, is the word I would use. It's very unlike what we've seen from most of the crowds from Donald Trump's rallies throughout this campaign. You know, his campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, was on TV a little bit earlier tonight, uh, already pointing fingers, saying, quote, they didn't get the full support of the Republican infrastructure. That came on the news that former President George W. Bush did not vote for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. It makes no living president now supports Donald Trump. This is something Trump came out and called, quote, Sad. So the campaign says they're one of the sources I spoke to tonight. Said quote, they're crushing it. But as I mentioned before, the crowd behind me very subdued, and they're watching very intently the returns on the TV screen. And we hear from them when Trump went for Stephen Derry. Joe, thank you. As for Hillary Clinton, she voted this morning in Chappaqua in Westchester County. She was joined by her husband and a large group of well-wishers. All right, let's head over to Fox 5's Dan Bowen's live with Clinton Election Headquarters, which is at the Javits Center. Dan. Yeah. No, Stephen Derry, when she cast that ad this morning, Hillary Clinton said that it was a humbling experience, a humbling experience to cast a ballot for herself. The first woman nominated for the presidency by a major party in this country. Inside the Javits Center for Word is the electric time with these new results coming, particularly in Florida and North Carolina. Some of these new updates show that it's trending in her direction. And I'm still not getting more exciting. Her current herself is not here. She's watching the results of the Peninsula Hotel in Midtown, ironically, not far from the Trump Tower. And she speaks here in the world that stage. The great scene behind me is a stage that is created in the shape of the United States. And tonight, this is a country. Dan, thank you. And a quick look at some of the local races we've been following for you tonight in New York. One time, Senator Chuck Schumer is being challenged by Republican Wendy Long and a pair of third party candidates. If Schumer wins as it is expected, the Democrats, if they do retake the Senate, like Chuck Schumer, would likely become the Senate majority leader. All right, also a race for the U.S. Senate seat in Connecticut is Democrat Richard Blumenthal seeking re-election. He's facing state representative and Air Force veteran Dan Carter. And a nasty race in the House out of New Jersey where polls close in just a few minutes, actually less than a minute. Incumbent Republican... What I need to do is to essentially get Surely, surely, please. John Meehan works for it. <laughs> well, actually, no, Jersey Central. Okay. Right, that's not working. Let me try a different number. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, I just I just called it and no, nothing answered. Uh, so I'm gonna try to call Julie. Okay. And just let her know that we're trying to to get this all set up. Hi, I tried calling the IFP number and no one answered. Well, we have someone that we'd like to interview.
I said, we have somebody we'd like to interview. If you could roll, please. I beg your pardon? Hi. Bear with us. <laughs> We're working on some bugs. <laughs> we have some election night bugs. <laughs> You're a very patient man. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're good. All right. Here we are. Here we are. So give me your name. Robert DiBiase. D-I-B-I-A-S-E. And you were out there at the polls today. I was, uh, many of the polls, since I am a challenger okay. in uh, Tom's River and all of Ocean County. Just look at me and talk to me. Oh, and sure. Tell me what, the, what it was like out there today. It was vibrant. I have seen lines today that I haven't seen in years. Uh, people were out the door in uh, most of the polling areas, and they all had this, this feeling in the air that, that uh, they wanted to cast their ballot today. And the people that don't normally vote came out today. So, Did you see any first-time any first-time voters? Many first-time voters out today. Uh, uh, the millennials, uh, millennials, the millennials. Uh, the millennials were out there today. So I saw quite a few of those. Yeah. So yes. What about the emotions? Because there, there's been a lot of, of talk about how people were just so anxious to get this election Ab done with. Absolutely yes, and and, it, and a lot of people voted early. Uh, this morning at 6.30, lines were out the door people before they went to work to get this over with. They waited for this day. Uh, and, and quite a few people in record numbers did vote by mail, uh, and the largest in, in Ocean County's history. So I don't know the exact number, but we're in 30,000, 40,000 30, 40, bracket. So. And, and that would be compared to other elections? Other elections, you're talking maybe uh, 15, 20,000. So you're talking double? Oh, easy. Yes, it may be even triple. What do you think of that? Uh, I, what think, uh, that? I think uh, the people uh, that were uh, worried about getting their vote in because we have a lot of snowbirds and they were going away on vacation or they, they go for the season other areas, mm -hmm. they got all their ballots in. Uh, so this year they paid attention to the calendar, mm -hmm. uh, which we're appreciative of. We want to see everyone vote. Now, this is an area of New Jersey that is pretty dependably Republican in, in terms of voting, although you do get to see some, some ticket splitting. Did you see any evidence of, of strong emotions one way or the other in terms of candidates? I can say yes. Uh, in Ocean County, uh, we have a conservative bent, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, and, of course, Trump was uh, on the, the, uh, uh, the lips today in many polls, Trump, 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 Trump and a little bit of Hillary, and they were talking about the contrast. You heard people in line. I mean, I didn't engage in dialogue, but this is what I heard. Yeah. So. And you said now you're a challenger. Explain yes. to people what that is. Here's what a challenger is. Uh, the uh, candidate has the opportunity to, to select some people as their representatives to go around to the polls uh, to see that everything is, is going uh, according to the rules. Uh, and, uh, and that's what we do. So uh, uh, everyone was afforded the chance to vote. That is the most important thing. Did you hear of any issues or any problems anywhere? There were a lot of provisional ballots that, uh, that were cast today in, in response to your original question uh, before about the first timers. So, uh, so their uh, names weren't necessarily Their in names the book? weren't in the book, but uh, since they were in that district and they showed proof of residency, and, and uh, they'll check that uh, in, in the, the uh, election uh, uh, board uh, to see who's properly registered or not, to see whether that provisional ballot counts. Was there any sense of history? Because each of these candidates 
are very um, hi history making potentially. Obviously, it could be the first woman president or a man like Donald Trump, yes. not not a traditional politician whatsoever. It's funny you should mention that, and, and those are the, the two items, uh, the two contrasting uh, themes of the day. Uh, first woman president. We love, to, we applaud uh, the, the, the idea of a first woman president, but a lot of people said, hmm, not this woman. And then uh, there was dialogue back and forth about Trump being, uh, he's, he's not the politician, he is not a, he's not a politician, obviously, uh, that has uh, won 17 candidates in the primaries. So that was a lot of talk today, and that would be historical also. The first time someone not in the mainstream is running for the presidency. So uh, that was the, the dialogue today. What do you take away from today personally? Uh, uh, other than, uh, I'll give you an Italian expression, agita. <laughs> <laughs> agita? <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, it um, was, it was um, some experience for me. It's one that I've been involved in many elections. Today was an experience uh, that was new. Uh, to see the contrasting themes that we just spoke of. And, and people were still on the fence, back and forth, back and forth, right in, going into the phone, into the booth. They still, so, they were still they torn. They were still, you know, they wanted to see the first woman, but yet they don't want to see this gridlock and, and the typical political aspects of things. They wanted a fresh, new look. That's where Trump has the advantage. So, so, so it was a, but it was a tough call then for people. I'm sorry. It was a tough call then for a lot of people. It was a tough call for a lot of people, yes. Yeah. Uh, but it, as you say, in Ocean County, we have a conservative uh, bent, and we have uh, read about Hillary over the years, and with this... Uh, and I won't go in, into the details of so everything that's on her plate right now. It kind of convinced people to go the other way. And you'll see the results in Ocean County that they did. We're going to get all the results yes. pretty soon. I know that the numbers come back pretty quickly okay. here in Ocean. Thank you so much, Paul, thank for Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. It was lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we will have more for you soon. This room is absolutely filling up now. The polls are closed and the numbers are going to start to come in. We will see who we can get to come and chat, fill you in, give you a, a picture, a slice of what it was like to be out there at the polls in Ocean County earlier today. Stand by. Let's go get somebody else. Thanks. Dan 
Thank you. And a quick look at some of the local races we've been following for you tonight in New York. Longtime Senator Chuck Schumer is being challenged by Republican Wendy Long and a pair of third party candidates. If Schumer wins as it is expected, the Democrats, if they do retake the Senate, well, Chuck Schumer would likely become the Senate majority leader. All right, also a race for the U.S. Senate seat in Connecticut as Democrat Richard Blumenthal is seeking re election. He's facing the state representative and Air Force veteran Dan Carter. And a nasty race in the House out in New Jersey where polls close in just a few minutes. Less than a minute. Incumbent Republican Scott Garrett is battling Democratic challenger Josh Gottheimer in the 5th Congressional District. The race has received national attention in part because the ads have been so negative. Uh, we have another update in half an hour. Now back to Fox News coverage of election night 2016. We will see you in about 20 minutes. So we're here with Deputy Mayor of Lacey, Peter Curatolo. I want you to um, spell your name for us. Curatolo, C-U-R-A-T-O-L-O. -O. Now, tell me where you were today, how you spent the day. Uh, the day was busy. Of course, I, I am up for re-election. Uh, and we were out at all the polls today, all 18 districts, uh, the mayor and myself, uh, thanking the poll workers. Um, but really the most memorable part of the day for me, uh, and I've been around many elections over the years, 
today more than ever before um, was the electricity that filled the rooms, the long lines, uh, the people waiting outside. I usually vote at 6 in the morning, 6.15 in the morning. I think I was 50th in my district to vote to this morning. So uh, it was at all the districts, and it was palpable. And it was just great to see the, the program in progress. What were people telling you when you talked to them about how they felt? Well, honestly, and it, it's, it's not because I'm part of the Republican Party. I am a proud Republican, but uh, a lot of people were decked out in their Trump garb. Uh, they were excited, as was I, to uh, vote for Donald Trump and uh, Roe right down the line. Um, you know, I think they've provided great leadership in Ocean County, and that starts with our chairman, George Gilmore. Um, proud of him personally and, and professionally. But what I will tell you is uh, that's what I saw today. If you're asking me as an objective reporter, observer, uh, it was because of Donald Trump that really uh, those lines were long because of him today. And people realize that it's a blue state, but that this is uh, a little, a, a red enclave in the blue state. The fact that they knew that Jersey was going to end up in, in the Clinton column does, didn't deter them and didn't dampen the enthusiasm at all. No, in Ocean County, we're really proud of that. We're surrounded by blue, and the north is blue, south is blue, west is purple at best. <laughs> but uh, Ocean County um, has had great Republican leadership, conservative leadership, and it's been that way for many years. It's something that we're proud of here, and it's something that um, our residents really respond to. Um, we're accessible, we're open, and um, I'm just proud to be a small part of it. I'm really pr proud to be a part of it in Lacey Township. Was this a divisive campaign, though? There, there are some people who aren't talking to each other, and they're in the same family, for example. Yes, I've heard that, and that's unfortunate when politics get that personal. But there's something at, at the, the core uh, with this e election in particular. Um, I, I do think at, at times the uh, liberal media, um, unfortunately, was unfair to some of our, our representat re representatives, and in particular, Mr. Trump. Um, but I think you're starting to see that resonate. I mean, you could see the excitement in this room here tonight. You could see some of these early election returns come back already. And some of the places that were squarely blue are now purple, and some, I think, may even go red tonight. I'm excited about it. What do you think happens? I mean, how is the county going to react if, for example, he doesn't win? There's all of these apocalyptic, you know, predictions that there could be anger and there could be, you know, violent reactions. You don't think that's going to happen, you do, or do you? What do you think? No, we're a proud county with a, a proud tradition of coming together. Uh, and I don't see that from the people in Ocean County or Lacey Township. Um, what we'll do is we will, uh, if we were to, to lose tonight the uh, presidency, we'll pick ourselves up by our bootstraps, come back again and regroup, uh, because that's what we do. I mean, we're cut from a tough cloth here, I'm, and I'm proud to be, I guess, one small fiber of that. Are people going to be able to compromise to work together after all of this? I would hope so for the good of the country. Um, but your beliefs, you know, my beliefs aren't like a ham at ShopRite. I'm not going to slice off so much, slice off a little more just to get along, slice off a little more, and, hey, Pete, go along to get along. You know, there's a point where you have to stand tall for what you believe in. Um, if you keep slicing away at that cold cut, you have nothing left. Um, so I understand to go along to get along, and, I, and I'm a team player. But when it comes to some of the core beliefs, no compromise. No compromise. Sorry. But we're, we are a proud county, and I know that the leadership in our county um, we support uh, our folks in Trenton, and we're going to do what we have to do, and uh, we're looking forward for a Trump victory tonight. I and mean, that's where we're at tonight. Uh, there's no concession here. I'm, I'm proud of him. He's re, he has changed our party, and I think he's changed um, elections in general. A lot of the pundits were, have been wrong about Donald Trump all along, and I think tonight, uh, regardless of the outcome, uh, he's changed the whole paradigm, and I think that's something to be proud of. Excellent. Peter, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks.
All right. Take care, and we'll check in later on. I hope so. All right. Thanks. I, I can see it on NJTV. Oh, absolutely, on yeah. Facebook. Thank you. All right. We're hoping to be able to get a hold of the county um, committee chairman and George Gilmore uh, in about maybe five minutes or so. So stand by. We will come back with that. In the meantime, the mood here is pretty upbeat. Um, we're expecting that the Republican congressional candidates uh, are going to win handily. Uh, that is Congressman MacArthur from the 3rd District and Congressman Chris Smith from the 4th. Um, we will bring you some totals uh, as soon as we have them. Thank you. Stand by. I turned around and you stopped walking with me. Hold what on. What are we doing? Hi, we're going to be talking over here. And what are we going to talk about? And uh, hopefully you can tell me how things are going. So, yeah, hi. Here we are. We are live with George Gilmore, who is the chairman of the county GOP committee. That's correct, in Ocean County. In Ocean County. And so how is, how is today looking? What was the turnout like? Turnout is extremely heavy, and we're very pleased with that. We want as many people to vote as possible, and our candidates are doing very well. We're going to have a great celebration here tonight. Really? What was it like over at the polls? Did you get to, to any of the actual polling places? Oh, I did. Uh, several of the polling places, and it was heavy, <clears throat> excuse me, in all the polling places, and the absentee ballots are unbelievable. We had over 30,000. In fact, my understanding is the uh, Attorney General's office is going to court to get an extension of time for us to count those ballots until 2 o'clock this morning. Uh -huh. They're still working on them. So it was that heavy a turnout, yeah. that, that big a commitment? Very, very heavy turnout in virtually every town throughout the county. Can you tell me how you think candidate Trump uh, has affected this election? I think that he has hit a nerve with a lot of people that are just unhappy with how things have been going in the country and a little dissatisfied with government in general. Like they feel they've been left out, they're not represented. And it's a wave that hit. It's strong here. We expect that Trump will have a very significant victory in Ocean County. Won't be enough to win the state, but significant victory. Now, the lieutenant governor just left. I know that she had indicated she didn't support Trump. Uh, there are members of the party who found some of the things that he had to say objectionable. 
I understand that, and one has to weigh the alternatives you have. You either vote for Hillary Clinton or you vote for Donald Trump. Between the two, you have to look at what you think the future of this country needs to be and what direction we should be going. And in that case, people in Ocean County made the decision they're going with Donald Trump. Now, Ocean County has historically voted Republican, although it's got some ticket splittings. Have you seen any indication that the tickets are going to split tonight? Or? No, I think we're going to be strong. Trump will win Ocean County big. All three congressional uh, congressmen, I should say, will be reelected uh, through Ocean County. Our sheriff and our two freeholders are going to win two to one. Mm -hmm. What about the whole issue of, of Bridgegate and the governor? Has that had any impact on, on just how people are feeling about the political process at all? Uh, in all honesty, I don't think so. I think people are concentrating on presidential election year, the future of the country, how they feel about their lot in life now compared to how it was four years ago, and most people want to see a change. Do you know to, uh, any indication of going forward if there's going to be any divisions that need to heal? There won't be any in Ocean County. I can't speak for the country, but uh -huh. I can tell you in Ocean County, everybody came together after we went through our, in, through our endorsement process and selected Donald Trump. So what's your takeaway from this election? Uh, that Trump has hit a nerve, and everybody better pay attention to it, because whether he wins or loses, there's a segment of the voters out there that are not happy with the current state of affairs. What is it do you think that specifically he gives them, that, he, that make, makes them gravitate towards him? I think it's because he says what he thinks, and he promises change to bring jobs back to America, to address other issues such as Obamacare. And I think that resonates with people, especially when you had the federal government come out and say there's going to be significant increases in Obamacare. In a blue state, how does it feel to be this, this little enclave of red? Hey, we're very proud of the job we do. It's all about representing the people to the best of your ability. I think our freeholders and our constitutional officers do that in Ocean County, and that's why we've been successful. You have to remember that our population has tripled over the last 20 years. Right. It's Democrats from North Jersey moving down here. When they move down here, when they see the quality of the services and the low cost of government, they vote Republicans. They convert? They convert. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to talk. Quite welcome. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. And that was George Gilmore, who is the head of the Ocean County GOP Committee, saying it's a big night, at least in Ocean County, for Donald Trump and for the other candidates as well. We'll find someone else to talk to in just a bit, but this is Brenda Flanagan reporting live from Tom's River, the days in where Republicans are gathering, waiting for the numbers to come in from the polls. See you in a bit.
Okay. Good. We're doing good in the county. Yeah. We don't know about we don't know about nationally with uh, Donald Trump, but uh, yeah, I know. we don't know. I don't know. I don't have any results. I'm looking for more. Everybody's looking for numbers. They're trying to get the numbers yeah, now. Yeah. Too early. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. How you doing? How are you? I'm not doing that. Whatever you say, I'm um, the boss. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So, Joe Vicari, Ocean County Freeholder. V I C A R I. Joe Vicari, Ocean County Freedom. That's absolutely correct. Today's a great night for us in Ocean County. Uh, all of our candidates are going to win. The Sheriff Mike Pestinati and our two freeholder candidates, uh, Jack Kelly and Virginia Haynes, and also our congressional candidates, which is Chris Smith and Tom MacArthur. But we're really very optimistic about what's taking place throughout the country as far as the next president of the United States. It's a little too early to tell. But Ocean County is really a strong county. It's a very conservative county. We have the highest percentage of seniors in the United States, uh, 68,000 veterans, and they're very conservative. They, in my opinion, that's the backbone of what not only New Jersey, but what the United States is all about. Protecting the values that we have, looking for our young people, quality of life. Uh, in Ocean County, it's important with our taxes. We have a stable tax rate, a AAA bond rating, and the best quality of life you can find any place in the state of New Jersey. Now, so you've got a very specific slice of population here when yes, you're talking very about diverse. seniors, but a lot of seniors. We have over almost 200,000 senior citizens, and they're from all over the state of New Jersey, most from Hudson County and from Essex County. I'm originally from Jersey City. I'm a Jersey City fellow. You're a transplant. I'm a transplant. After I finished St. Peter's University, I, I came to Ocean County. It's a great place to raise a family. But I think when you look at Ocean County, most of our people are transplants. When you go and you look at the seniors, they all came mostly from North Jersey. They love the quality of life, they like low taxes, and they always vote Republican, so we're very, very fortunate. So that's what makes us Trump country. Well, the Donald Trump, I don't know where it's going right now. We're optimistic. It's going to take a few more hours. Uh, there's a lot of things that are happening. There's a lot of people with strong feelings. It's really your philosophy of life, how you feel. And uh, Tell we me feel about the feelings here. Well, the feeling it's here is that they've, they've it's strong. well, we give people opportunities. I'm originally an educator. I'm a teacher, and we want people to work, to earn a college degree or a degree in, in, uh, in skills, whether it be the vocational school, and to get into the workplace. And that's what the people look for in Ocean County, people that have opportunities, they want to work. They're more concerned when I vote, it's not just for my children, it's for my grandchildren. I'm more concerned what's going to happen with my grandchildren as far as getting a job, uh, will they be able to live in New Jersey? Uh, what about the debt that's taking place throughout New Jersey and the United States? That's very, very important. And I think that's what the people are going to look for. Uh, nationally, I don't know. We're very optimistic. And it's going to really tell me, as a former history teacher, what direction and demographics the United States is going into. So when people are sitting thinking about the future, how do you move forward after an election that got so nasty? I mean, I, there's really no other word. It got nasty. Well, I, I think the most important thing is unity. We're all Americans, we have to work together, whether we be a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent. We only have one goal in life, and it's how do we improve the quality of life, and how to make America safe. And that's very, very important to me when I see what's going on. I want safety not only for myself, but more so for my children and for my grandchildren. Safety is very important, opportunities, and someday to get a job. And I see the job leaving the United States, and I'm really very concerned. Uh, I told you I'm from Jersey City, when I graduated St. Peter's College many, many years ago, I was guaranteed a job if you want to work. There was always jobs out there. Now I see college graduates with a lot of debt and there are no jobs. And that really annoys me and it gets me very upset, not only as a former educator in, in Ocean County and a teacher, of course, in Jersey City, but that's what America is all about. Opportunities where people can work, they can work hard, and people should work. But we have to give them opportunities. And that's what's very important. And that's one of the reasons why I, I support Donald Trump in this election. What did you see at the polls today? Well, the polls, it's really mixed. It depends. It's too early to tell. Um, 
you know, everyone is saying, well, he may not be the best candidate, she may not be the best candidate, they have to settle. But it's very difficult in this kind of an environment where there's so much flux that's taking place in the world, internationally in the United States and what's taking place. Uh, you know, we don't have another Ronald Reagan, in my opinion. And, you know, he would bring people together after an election. And I think the most important thing tomorrow, people have to say, you know something, we have one common goal, we're Americans, we have to make America safe. And we have to do the very best thing to give our children and grandchildren opportunities. The same opportunities that I had when I was growing up have to be given to our children, our grandchildren. Very, very important. So that's your bottom line. Right? That's your bottom line. That's your bottom line. That's my bottom line. A Jersey City guy, downtown Jersey City. Where are you from originally? I live way up in the northwest part of the state, ah, okay. in Jefferson. People always ask me, Joe McCary, how did you become a Republican if you grew up in Jersey City? I grew up right across from the city hall in Jersey City. And you know, if I was living in Jersey City, I probably would be a Democrat freeholder. <laughs> now I'm in Hudson <laughs> County. I'm a Republican freeholder. And I love it. And I love the people in Hudson County. They do the right thing for their people. And you know, even public officials, Democrat and Republicans, we all try to do the right thing. We have different philosophies, different ways of doing things. But the most important thing is taking care of the people that we, we represent. But compromise is not a dirty word for you. No, it's not. No. And sometimes consensus and compromise, we have to do it. And uh, what we have to do is we have to bring more harmony back into the United States, no matter who you are, no matter what you do in life or what your goals are in life. Joe Bacari, good. thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Take care. George, this lady over here on TV. Congressman Smith, you want to interview him? He's going to love you. I would love to have Great Congressman guy. Smith. Say I'm helping you out here. Yes, you yeah. are, George. He, he thank you. He wins by a big margin every I, single year. Yeah, what, more than 60% from 60 what I understand? There's Congressman Smith right over here. Congressman Smith, how are you? How are you? Very good, thank you. Can we chat with oh, sure, sure. That'd be great. All righty. Um, so here we are, Congressman Chris Smith, 4th District, Republican. And this is how many terms? Uh, we're going into my 19th term. 19th term. Um, are you about to st stand just up and make a Just going to say a few victory? words. Yeah, I'm just a so grateful to the people for this opportunity to serve. I, I love this job. I love pouring myself into casework and writing laws and uh, hopefully for the betterment of, of all people. And uh, it's just great to have such a, a, a groundswell of support. So this is official then? Yeah, the numbers are, are overwhelming mm -hmm. and they're very positive. This has been a, a very divisive election. Yeah, it has. Uh, what do you think of it? Uh, I know that you are a Trump supporter. Well, I, I think, you know, the WikiLeaks have really given us an indication into some very I don't know, um, underhandedness on the part of some of the major media, uh, particularly in Washington. And I think that's unfortunate. We need, you know, a, a, a press that really pushes to give every side an opportunity to make their case. And um, unfortunately, that didn't really happen this year. And, 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 you know, I do a lot with democracy building overseas. Free and fair elections are extremely important when some in the media, and not you, but certainly on the national level, are predisposed to support one over the other. That's that's a, a dangerous precedent uh, for our democracy. We need to have, you know, both sides competing, arguing, not questions given in advance uh, uh, to one of the candidates, as with Hillary Clinton did with CNN. Uh, that puts a black mark wrongly on journalism. Uh, I'm a great believer in journalism and the freedom of the press, uh, but there's a responsibility that goes with that to make sure that it's truly free and, and fair for all people. No matter who wins. Yes. Oh, there's got to be a lot of mending. Uh, you know, the, the, I, I believe in bipartisanship. Um, I, I, every law that I have written, I've always reached across the aisle, found a friend uh, on the other side of the aisle, Democrat, to work with me on it. Uh, it's all about teamwork. Now, principled partisanship is a good thing, where you clash, but you keep it civil and courteous at all times. And then where you can cooperate and have common ground, you do that as well this for the good of the people. This race has been, has been anything. Anything but. Exactly. So we need to get back to that, that hallowed principle of, of, of just people making their case and not getting personal, because that, that hurts as well. The 5th District race yeah. was, it reached a new low in the estimation. Yeah, of I'm not sure how that's going to go. But. Uh, we don't have any numbers at this point yeah. either. But do you think people are going to be able to come back after that? Oh, I it? do. Uh, you know, hope springs eternal. Hopefully people will, will, you know, coalesce around what's good for the country. We need a jobs agenda, a pro-growth agenda. Uh, Obamacare has proven to be a, a, a miserable 
in terms of its implementation, you know, I, I can't tell you how much casework we get from people who say, individuals and businesses providing health care, we can't pay these premiums. The uh, deductibles are so high. Uh, it's unaffordable. Uh, it has not lived up to even close to the expectations that were uh, promoted by the White House. Really I'm running over to Mom, that's why I've got to leave. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate it. Take care. Congratulations. Thanks for the time too. Are you going to be saying a few words? To declare victory. And I think you may have heard it here first. And now we're looking at George Gilmore, who is the committee chair for Ocean and Ladies Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Hey, this is going to be a historic night, not only in Ocean County, but hopefully across the country. And uh, I can we tell you, in Ocean County, in the 4th district. Congressional District, we have Congressman Chris Smith right now. I think we have about 40% of the district in. He's winning 3 to 1, 21,000 to just 8,000. Chris has to... Congressman has to run up to Monmouth County. They're getting their returns in. He started out in Mercer, so he's got to head out. So we want to give him the opportunity to address you right now. So without any further ado, a great congressman for Ocean County, the entire district, and the country, Chris Smith. George, thank you so very, very much uh, for your extraordinary leadership as county chairman. Uh, Ocean County has one of the best organizations I have ever seen, but also the best candidates. Uh, I look at our freeholders, uh, and I know that, uh, that um, Jack and, and Ginny Haynes are going to win tonight. The numbers are overwhelming. And of course, Sheriff Bastinardi has done a wonderful job as sheriff. Uh, and that doesn't happen by accident. So George, thank you for your extraordinary leadership as chairman, to the county committee, to the club presidents, to all of you, the, the uh, everyone for just rallying behind us and making tonight possible. I am so appreciative. And my wife and Marie and I are appreciative as well. Let me say just briefly a word about my wife, Marie. We've been, let's get Marie up there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marie and I are just uh, about a half year away from our 40th wedding anniversary. And uh, I want to say she's not only my best friend and uh, the love of my wife, of my life, I should say, <laughs> is my wife. But she's also a very wise and compassionate person and has made a huge difference in everything my staff and I have done uh, all these years. Uh, so I want to thank her uh, for that. It's just, uh, it's been an extraordinary love and friendship and I couldn't do this job, frankly, and over the course of 36 years in the house without her. Let me also thank, <laughs> as I said, this wonderful slate here in Ocean County uh, that delivers, as does the County Freeholder Board, extraordinary service to the people. They do it with class, they do it with professionalism, uh, and I think that's why those numbers are high every single year. And again, George, you are really doing a great job in making sure that the candidates that we put forward are truly amazing people. I'd like to uh, say tonight, my prayer for our country, faced with unprecedented challenges, both foreign and domestic, is I'd like to make an urgent appeal to God for wisdom and for courage for all of us to act decisively. America needs a pro-growth agenda. The job creation has been anemic under President Obama. America needs to promote a culture of life, respect for the weakest and most vulnerable. The failure of Obamacare needs to be repealed and replaced. The doubling of the debt from 10 to $20 trillion in eight short years. All of the presidents combined got us to about 10 billion. One president got us to 20 billion. Put in an unconscionable burden uh, upon our children and our grandchildren. We're the parents of four children and five grandchildren. It is wrong for any Congress and for a White House to impose such a debt on people paying the bills uh, which we will have to do for that enormous debt. And the vast number of 
foreign policy mistakes, the huge blunders that have been made by the Obama administration, like the egregiously flawed Iran nuclear deal, must be revisited and must be reformed. So again, I want to thank all of you tonight. Uh, I couldn't do it, we couldn't do it without your extraordinary help. The county committee, all of the work that you do, the phone banking, the literature distributions, uh, it is, it's made all the difference, and I'm deeply, deeply grateful, as is Marie, my wife, uh, for your support. George, thank you again. We'll be back in a few minutes to have some more of our speakers. I think we're going to bring the entire slate out, let them address you, and let's all celebrate. So I'll be back in a few. <coughs> County GOP Committee Headquarters. I just want to give you a little update on what's going on. Uh, Congressman Chris Smith, uh, who first uh, won election to the 4th District in New Jersey uh, in 1980, has just declared victory. Uh, we are waiting to hear from Congressman MacArthur. There's a bit of a snag with his situation from his campaign spokeswoman who tells us that uh, several thousand provisional ballots were apparently printed with a smudge. They are going to need to be counted by hand, and that could significantly delay uh, the actual outcome, the official outcome. They're waiting a little bit longer than Congressman Smith did before they actually declare victory. Uh, that's going to I guess in a, in a few moments, though, he's going to come and he's going to chat with us. He'll explain what's going on. Normally, uh, the, co the uh, Republicans here have an easy victory. This is his first re-election bid after first winning. A tough battle against um, Amy Bellegarde. Uh, so 
He's run into a little bit of a technical glitch is the way they're explaining it. They're gonna actually count, a, they figure it'll take a couple of days for them to count those ballots by hand. And we're gonna swing back over to the podium because George Gilmore, who is the chair of the committee. As I promised, we were gonna take a little pause for a few minutes, but now it's time to get back to what we're here for tonight and that's to celebrate a whole bunch of victories in Ocean County. But before we do, I think it's only fitting that we have a little patriotic song sung, and Marty Ebert is gonna come up and sing America the Beautiful. Okay, Marty. It's gonna be a cappella, and you can all feel free to sing along. And, uh, with this song, we don't have to worry about any NFL quarterbacks, whether they're standing or sitting. <laughs> Tonight that I want to thank. 
we've had a tremendous campaign of bringing people together, and not always people that you'd expect to be together. We've had groups of business people and labor organizations that have sat side by side making phone calls. We've had police officers and teachers and conservative Republicans and moderate Republicans all coming together to reach out to the voters of this congressional district. In total, we had over 650,000 voter contacts in this campaign. Uh, phone calls, door-to-door -door visits, over 650,000. And I thank each and every one of you that have participated in that. For me and for people up and down this ticket. I want to congratulate Sheriff Mastronardi and freeholders uh, Ginny Haynes and Jack Kelly for their big things tonight. And I want to congratulate the Ocean County GOP and its superb chairman. There's not a better Republican organization anywhere in this state than right here in Ocean County. I want to remember my friends in Burlington County because they fight in tough territory for every seat they hold. It's a, it's a district with more Democrats than Republicans, and yet Republicans win in Burlington County, and I'm thankful for them too. And most of all, I want to thank you in this room and the people in Ocean and Burlington County that have given their faith to me and have entrusted me with, uh, with representing them in Washington. I am honored. I'm grateful, and I, as I did two years ago, pledge to be part of the solution and not part of the problem in Washington. When I won two years ago after a tough fight, I said it was time to govern, not to gloat, and I said I was going to work with Democrats whenever necessary to get things done uh, for South Jersey, and I've done that. I've worked with Democrats to save Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst, to hold FEMA accountable for the way they're treating Sandy victims, and for anything else where I felt it was necessary and, and, and uh, helpful. Right. And when I. And when I've needed to, I have stood against the dangerous excesses of this administration. When they've overreached, when they put dangerous policies like Obamacare here at home or the dangerous Iran nuclear deal abroad, then I've stood against them. No matter what happens tonight, we're going to have some more challenges. If Donald Trump wins the White House, then I think we have a, a wonderful opportunity to bring taxes down for our people, to grow our economy, to restore our standing in the world, and to do things that have long needed to be done. If Hillary Clinton wins the White House, then we're going to have to thread the needle of, on the one hand, stopping the excesses of liberalism, and on the other hand, finding areas of common ground and finding where we can compromise and get things done. Whoever wins, we have to have the courage to lead differently and end the gridlock that, that uh, has gripped our government. <clears throat> And I think that has to happen inside our party, too. It has to happen inside the Republican Party, too. I've learned after 30 years in business and two in politics, politics is a game of addition, not of subtraction. And as a party, we have got to find a way to add more young people, to add minorities, to add women. We have to do that or we lose the future. We've got to avoid the straight party line talk that punishes people that step out slightly. We've got to avoid considering compromise a dirty word. In our party, we have to do that, in my view. And I would say to both parties, in the words of the Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want. That's the nature of life. And so for me, tonight is a time to reconsider the kind of leadership our country needs going forward. For us to tackle the big issues like tax reform, immigration reform, criminal justice reform, education reform, we're going to have to deal with hard truths 
and make choices. We're going to have to ruffle some feathers, I think, now and then. And that includes the unelected uh, media demagogues and the self-proclaimed PC police. Donald Trump has done that uh, uh, for us. He's taught us you don't have to give in to the PC police. And you can say what's on your mind sometimes. America didn't declare our independence from the world's greatest superpower of that time, end the scourge of slavery, lead our allies to victory in two world wars, put a man on the moon, win the Cold War. We didn't do any of those things by debating in echo chambers, hiding in safe zones, and stifling honest disagreement. And I want to be part of a leadership that moves us in a new direction. We have always done it in the past. We fought among ourselves, and then we united around the great principles that Marty just reminded of us when he sang. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. That's what I believe. That's the kind of leader I want to be. And I want to thank you for believing in me, for giving me a chance to represent you in Washington. I will never break that trust. God bless you, God bless your families, and God bless the great United States of America. So we're building on that foundation going forward. And most importantly, I'm very proud of the relationship we have with the Chiefs of Police uh, around the county. And continue, my partners that are with here tonight is uh, a retired Chief, uh, Rick Berkowitz from Brick, and retired Chief uh, who are now with us, uh, Brian Klemikowski, who are members of our staff. So give them a round. For us.
We will continue to work with the chiefs as time goes on uh, to deal with issues. As you know, we had a terrorist act in our own county here, but we will work with the chiefs of police throughout the county to make sure it's safe. We will certainly work diligently uh, in various areas, working with the freeholders, getting the equipment, and the administration across the street on Hooper Avenue, and we're so glad of our partnership with them. And I just assure you that we're doing all we can to make Ocean County a safe county, and so people can enjoy our number one asset, and that's tourism. So we have to have a safe county do it. We have to invest in public safety, and thank you for the freeholders, not only the two I congratulated got elected, but also the rest of the board that is working with the Ocean County Sheriff's Office. There's only one other person who's more happy that I uh, attain this tonight, and that is my wife, who's here, because she knows I won't be holding the mess up the house for the next three years. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Wacky, for those who don't know, in order to save taxpayers' money, she's our mascot, McGruff. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah, McGruff and a wife. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. And now we have our dynamic uh, freeholder candidates. Uh, Jack Kelly, who just won his ninth term to the Freeholder Board, that's a sign of confidence of the people of this county that he's done a great job in representing them and will continue to do that. Now, Jack's been a longtime friend of mine. Uh, started out when he was on the Township Committee in Eagleswood and, uh, in 1980. It's been a long time. He's a good man, and uh, I am proud that he was re-elected Freeholder tonight, ninth term. Jack Kelly. Oh, hey. he, now, you all know this already, but he's also president of county council. And in that role, I think he's going to give a little report that will bring some smiles to faces. Okay, I can't wait to talk about this year's election for the county, but I want to give you a little report on the election for president. What have we been hearing for the last three weeks? Donald Trump has to win North Carolina he has to win Ohio, and he has to win Florida. I'm happy to report to you right now he's ahead in all three of those states. Yeah. And we also heard he had to turn one of the blue states. Yeah. He is also ahead in Virginia by three Virginia. points with over two-thirds of the vote. just wants re-election. He's, He's also run the board of Georgia and South Carolina and Kentucky and West Virginia and so many other states. And it looks like there is a real good chance that Hillary has to rip up that speech she made for tonight to accept the uh, nomination. When they were reporting that earlier this afternoon that she had her speech with her for tonight, I thought it might be just a little bit premature. Let's hope it was way premature and that she never steps foot inside the White House again. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to bring my family up, my wife Evelyn, my daughter Dawn Marie, and my son Jimmy, who are here with me tonight. I want to talk a little bit about the county election and how thrilled we are with the support we have for so many people in this room. George earlier said that he promised the Trump campaign that we were going to win big in Ocean County. But do you know who really made that promise? All of us in this room. Thank you for that support. For we said a message that we're here. And don't forget, our organization, under the leadership of our chairman, was the first organization to endorse Trump well before the primary. So he saw something that other people didn't, and we got behind a winning horse, and let's hope that he does finish this out and win this election tonight and make America great again. Yeah. Yeah. Now in our election, we just won a big election once again. And it's the ninth time in Georgia said it was my ninth re-election uh, to the Board of Freeholders. 
I never won one of those elections by myself. And again, it's all of us who win the election. But the support I get at home, and that's why I asked my wife and my children to come up here with me, that is the support we really need every day. Because when the bad editorials come out, or somebody says something really nasty about, it's these guys that tell me they're right. No, I mean, that I'm right. That's what it is. Yeah. So I couldn't do it without their support. I couldn't do it without your support. And we're thrilled with the victory. And Tom MacArthur, that's how long you're supposed to speak. No longer than that. <laughs> Thank you all. Well, our next three holder up. A few people I want to recognize in the audience. We have three over Joe McCarry. Joe, where are you? Uh, my vice chair and deputy county clerk, Barbara Lanuto. County administrator, Carl Block. Carl. And uh, I'll recognize a few others after we bring up our Ginny Haynes, who I said didn't want to come out here initially until all the voting was in. But because right now the tally is at 122,000 to about 65,000, I think it's safe for us to recognize that we want tonight to be one bit. Now, as you know, Ginny is our state committee woman. She's also our national committee woman. She served on the township committee in Tom River. She served in the assembly. She was clerk to the assembly. She became lottery commissioner, although she never picked my numbers, never. But most importantly, she is now the second woman to be elected freeholder in Ocean County in the history of the county. extremely hard to gain your confidence and your support, and obviously, Ginny, you succeed. Ginny Haynes. Thank you, George. Good evening, everyone. I'm trying not to get emotional because it's a very emotional evening for me tonight. I'm going to start off by thanking my family and all of my friends. Plus, all of you are all of my friends, and I can't thank you enough. And I just want to thank my parents for giving me this opportunity. And to thank all of you, because Ocean County is the premier county of the state of New Jersey. In fact, probably in the United States of America, because we are a strong Republican county. We do what's right for the people of Ocean County. We do what we want to make sure that the people of Ocean County have the services that are provided. We are the best. We will continue to be the best. We elect the right people. We elect the, the best people for the job. And I cannot thank each and every one of you for all the support that you've given myself as well as the rest of us on the GOP ticket. And Jack Kelly reminded me, he says, Jenny, make sure you tell him how many times you told me that Trump is going to win. Because I said, you've got to stay positive. You've got to go and say that Trump is going to be the next president because we cannot have four years of the same thing we've had for these last going on eight years. And I just can't thank you again and again and again for the support that all of you have given me and Jack and the entire ticket. And I just want to wish congratulations to all the local towns, all the people that won on the Board of Education. I don't know all the results yet, but I just want to wish you congratulations, best of luck, and to thank you to my family, my dear friends, and all of you that are here tonight. And congratulations to everybody that was on the team. Thank you. a little emotional tonight, I can tell you the reason why. It's because throughout this entire campaign, she kept saying, I have to win. I can't let the party down. She didn't care about herself. She did not want to let our Republican Party down in Ocean County. And Ginny, you did. You did great. A few other people I want to recognize. We have our state senator from the 9th Legislative District, Chris Connors. Chris, where are you? We 
We have our Assemblywoman from the 9th Congressional District, Congressional <laughs> Legislative District, Diane Go. Diane? Okay. Our State Senator from the 10th Legislative District, Jimmy Holzow. Jimmy? Now, my eyes aren't that good, so if I missed anybody, I will make those announcements a little later. But we also have some significant victories in some towns. Uh, in Tom's River, county seat, we had a contest in the second ward. Kevin Gahagan won tonight. Kevin, come on out and say a few words. Good evening, all. I'm not going to repeat what's been said before. I'll keep it short and sweet, I promise. First of all, I'd like to thank my family and friends that are here. Not only the county GOP, George Gilmore, but my local Tom's River GOP, Juan Ballou, Bob DiBiase, everybody that was out making phone calls, putting out signs, whatnot. Uh, Debbie Clement, if she's still here in the house, I'd like to thank her personally, and uh, some of you will find this funny. I also want to thank Sprint for the unlimited phone call and text plan. <laughs> so, that's it, and on the road to victory. We've had a host of victories across the, the county, and two of the first people here tonight uh, were from Lacey Township. Steve Kennis, Pete Caratola, they didn't have a contest. Nobody decided to run against them, so they wanted to be here. I think they were here at 745, uh, but Lacey Township, good job. Now, I want to thank all of you for coming out. I'm going to give my little speech now. And that is, this victory is because of the grassroots of this organization. And all of you worked very hard. You have every year we ask you to. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of not only myself, the organization, our candidates. But thank you very much. And let's go on and celebrate a Trump victory tonight. Thank you. Brenda Flanagan. We are live in Ocean County at the campaign headquarters in Tom's River, and I am with Congressman Tom McCarthy. Congratulations. Thank you, Brenda. Good night. Good night. How good? Well, uh, you know, the results are still coming in, but uh, in Ocean County, it's uh, looking like three to one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Burlington County, is. Uh, it looks like I won that county, too. And and not just me, up and down the ticket, it looks like we've had uh, good results tonight. So uh, so it's a good night. And, uh, and obviously things are developing around the country still. Right. 
Now tell me about the provisional ballots issue here. Well, uh, you know, just uh, I know what everyone knows. They were misprinted and the machines can't read them, so they're being counted uh, by hand in Burlington County. Uh, and we'll find out. Uh, but I want enough in Ocean County that... Uh, uh, comfortable? Y yes, yeah, yeah. We declared uh, about uh, 45 minutes ago. So tell me, what is it going to be like now going back to Washington, given the situation with the country? Of course, the presidential is still up in the air. Um, how do you go back now after a race like this? This has just gripped the nation and in many respects torn it apart. Well, I think the first thing is we have to go back and do the people's work. And yes, it's been contentious, but this country has a long history of coming together after elections as the greatest democracy in the history of the world, putting those differences aside and plowing uh, together. And, and I believe both parties need to do that. And I don't know who won yet the presidential. Nobody does. Uh, you know, I have my hopes for that, and so does everyone else. But whichever candidate wins and whichever party controls the Senate, I believe the Republicans will control the House. Uh, the challenge is the same. We have to go back. Uh, find areas where we can compromise with one another and and, uh, and move things forward. We have a lot of issues that need uh, uh, attention. Things I talked about tonight, uh, getting our economy moving again, uh, regaining our place in the world, immigration reform, uh, criminal justice reform, education reform. There's too much that needs to be done uh, for us to continue the partisan bickering. And, uh, and my intention is to go back and whatever the lay of the land is, to find a way to make it work. What's going to be your number one issue when you get back into, into uh, D.C.? It's the same issues for me. Uh, national security is very high on the list, as is getting our economy really rolling again. And I know unemployment has come down, and that's, that's great. But the number of people out of the workforce is higher today than it's been at any time since the 1970s. It's not uh, a strong enough economy. Too many people are piecing together a living with part-time jobs. And, and there's more we can do, I think, to, uh, to help the economy really rebound. And so those will be my priorities. A lot of people have said that Donald Trump struck a chord uh, that, uh, that just resonated. I know Ocean is deeply red in, in terms of it's surrounded by a blue state. But when you're talking about joblessness and things like that, it, is that part of, of the issue that, I, that, he, that he was able to touch? Yes. Uh, South Jersey's economy is, uh, is a little tougher than other parts of the state and the country. And there's a host of reasons for that. But I, I think New Jersey in general has struggled a bit more. Uh, and I think there's more we can do uh, nationally that will help this area. And there's things we can do here at home as well to try to to try to rebuild a vibrant economy where people have hope and uh, are pursuing their dreams and and, uh, and growing. What's, what are you looking forward to after all, all of this? I'm looking forward to all of it. It's uh, you like being a congressman. I do like being a congress. It's a it's a tremendous privilege. Uh, I feel like I found ways to get things done. Because I, that's one of the reasons your your predecessor left. Was he had a he felt he had a hard time accomplishing yeah, I, things. You know, uh, Brenda, I've uh, found ways of, of making amendments to other people's bills, uh, introducing bills that matter to me, but finding Democrats to come alongside me and help. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I I like to find solutions. I like to find ways to actually move forward. And sometimes that means letting the other guy win too. Uh, this zero sum game kind of politics in my mind is fruitless and it's not good for the country. Both parties need one another and we need to allow uh, for one another to win some uh, some ground so we can get what we need to get done. And uh, and I like finding ways to do that. Congressman Tom MacArthur, congratulations. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you for taking the time. Pleasure. And good luck. Thanks. That was Congressman Tom MacArthur. He declared victory. There are going to be a few more provisional ballots counted, but in the end, this is a red part of a blue state, and he won easily. Brenda Flanagan reporting live from Tom's River. We'll have more coming up. Stay tuned.
Congress. Voted for the no, no, he did. He did. He just became a citizen from Canada. Yeah, I became a U.S. citizen. It's my first vote. Oh my God. So I'm so excited. It's a good so. story. All right. So <laughs> let me see if I can call them up and let them know to roll. Okay. Hold on. I need to call them up in the newsroom and ask them to roll to record. So hold on. To them. <laughs> was live on Facebook. Don't sweat it. <laughs> it'll be it'll be fine. Okay. Hold on just a second. Yeah, you can roll. That's awesome. My thumbs up. No, 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 no. All right, hold on just a second. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you really? Well, you know what, for me. They're taking, they're taking pictures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you swing over this way? How's my hand? How's that? I got a big face, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say I got a big, what, I can't fit it all on camera? <laughs> Probably not. Did you want it? I don't know what. <laughs> all right. Okay. So they're rolling. So what we have, you want to frame two? Can you frame two? Everybody, you need to back them up? Back them up? All right. How far back? Who's that? Paul? Paul? Your first time by Okay, we'll get them. Congratulations to the Congress. First time voting? I am. So these are all first time voters? Yes. Wow. Let me introduce you to We took a photo together. Yes, we did. Don't ask them who they voted for. <laughs> you can. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's the reason why I'm a first time voter. <laughs> nice. So we have Congressman MacArthur who is meeting some first time voters. I used to investigate insurance plans. Insurance all What kind? I do Medicare. And that's another thing I'm very concerned about uh, Hillary getting in office because I deal with, with uh, they go through and if she lowers the Medicare age, I'm very concerned about that. Yeah, that'll that. hurt the program. Well, I, uh, I enjoyed 30 years in insurance. It was a great career. And, uh, Tom, why don't you come right over here and we can maybe have you guys talking. Okay. So what we're going to, we have a couple of first time voters here who are meeting their congressman. Have at it. You can get over here. <laughs> can you give me your name? My name is Dean Marusic. And you're from? I'm from Manchester. And originally from Canada? Yes, I am originally from Canada. And the first time you voted was? Was today. And I'm very, very proud of it. It's an honor. And this place, this country is a great country. And I love I love being the part of the process. And I got to hug everyone just to thank everybody. <laughs> thank you so much. Group hug. <laughs> Group hug, yeah. <laughs> Very and to cast your first vote in Ocean County, that's oh, a double yeah. privilege. Thank you. <laughs> and your name? Uh, Paul Giordano. And you're from? I live in Brick, New Jersey. I'm originally from New York. I just moved to Brick, New Jersey about a year ago. Not from Brooklyn, huh? Yes. Jihad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brick is, uh, Brick is one of the largest towns in my uh, congressional district. And uh, it's a great town. You picked a good place to live. Yes. Why well, come to Brick from Brooklyn? different quality of life you know very different um, I love it here you know people are great 
you, you really have, I mean, things have changed a lot, you know, in New York and in Brooklyn, in the, city, in the inner cities. You don't have, like, that community type feel anymore the way you used to many years ago. So it's very community oriented here. People say hello. You speak to your neighbors. It, it's it's they, really a they really give, nice They give group here. hugs around yeah. here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's congratulations, and uh, it's, it's terrific to be able to do that. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. And come back uh, often. Ocean County is uh, yeah. a very uh, active county politically. It's a great place. This is a very different part of New Jersey. This is the, 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 little, the, the little swath of red. <laughs> Surrounded yeah. by a blue ocean. Yeah. Is that? Say something. I just must say. I have to say, just being, voting for the first time, being so excited to be an American citizen, to be part of the whole process, and the lovely people in this county. We love. Without love, we have nothing as human beings. So we must continue the process to be good people and help others around us to become better. And that deserves another hug. <laughs> another hug. <laughs> there we go. Get, get Brooklyn in there, too. Everybody's happy tonight. Oh, sure. Thank well, congratulations Thank to you. both of you. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thank you so much. Welcome Thank to you. the process. Thanks for, for bringing them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. And congratulations again. Thank you. Take care. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. It was much. lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much. And where, where in Canada are you from? I, I grew up in the we Toronto met. area, just north of Toronto. My daughter went to the University of Toronto. Beautiful, yeah. She loved awesome. it. It's a gorgeous town. Gorgeous. We, we, we have a lot of love for people. And uh, the I love sure that we bring down here different. and just make people better, you know, around us. And we, we come to a consensus. Things happen. We come to an agreement. Then we work things out, you know. And it's um, it was quite a shock for me originally to come down uh, because it was a little bit different. Uh, I wasn't used to the culture, but I've, I've gotten used to the culture. And uh, it's, a, it's a different place. It sure is, but it's a great place. And uh, looking forward to moving on and, and, and helping all people around us. We're just, I'm just very grateful. And thank you for having me. It's, it's awesome. Well, I mean, How about a hug again? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> he just Beautiful. likes to hug people. Oh, it's, just, it's great stuff. It's great. <laughs> no, no, shockingly, I, I need to ask you this. I have to ask you this. A lot of people joke, oh, if Trump is, if Trump wins, I'm moving to Canada. And here you are down here. Yes, I am. Uh, I am down here. I live down here. And uh, being a U.S. citizen, it is very important for me to continue uh, being a good human being and helping the process and people. And just, just having the love of humanity and helping all involved. It's just a wonderful thing. People want to move to Canada, they, they should reconsider. We have great things here, here, right here in Ocean County, New Jersey. We, we love, we absolutely love the people. And let's, let's make it even better. How about that? That sounds wonderful. That sounds Another hug. Another hug. Thank you so much. <laughs> you have to give me your last name, though. Spell it for me. Marusic, M-A-R-U-S-I-C. M-A-R-U-S-I-C. Correct, yes. Welcome and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Even the camera on <laughs> Watch out. You're gonna, the photographer's getting a hug. Group hug. <laughs> so we're going to roll in a little bit of the flavor here in Tom's River. The room is starting to clear out. That happens generally after they give the speeches on election night. Uh, we will update you with whatever information we get. I'm Brenda Flanagan reporting live from Tom's Room. Talk to you later.
We've got hundreds of Trump supporters continue to file in here to the Hilton, to the ballroom here, uh, wearing their Make America Great red hats, those uh, trademark hats by uh, Donald Trump, the Republican nominee and his family watching the returns at Trump Tower, not here yet at the Hilton. And the crowd cheers every time they see that another, that Fox News has rejected Donald Trump wins another state. But it is a nail biter, as you know, if you've been watching everybody here wondering what the result, especially in Florida, is going to be, because of course that race right now is simply too close to call. And the all-important swing states of Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio, everyone looking at to see what will happen and how it will impact the outcome of this race. Donald Trump uh, earlier this morning called into uh, Fox and Friends. He did it because he said he was superstitious and he did that and won the primaries and he was hoping it would bring him good luck tonight. But as I said, just support us here tonight uh, quietly uh, and hoping that their candidate wins. No sign of Donald Trump yet tonight. I'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Sharon. In Clinton moment this morning in Chapel Hill and Westchester County, she was joined by her husband in a large group of volunteers. Let's send it over to Fox Files Linda Schmidt, who's live at Clinton Election Headquarters at the Jackson site. Hi, Linda. That's right. Hi there, Stephen Derrick. Well, you know, the stage right here behind me is where Hillary Clinton is going to be addressing the crowd inside here later on this evening. The action, though, is not going on in here right now. Where the action is, is outside. There are thousands, thousands of Hillary Clinton supporters lining up and down in the front of the Javits Center. And they have a big stage set up outside for them. Go ahead and take a look at the video because VIPs throughout the night will be addressing that crowd outside. The first person to take it, uh, the uh, stage was just a short time ago. It was Mayor Bill de Blasio. And he talked about how Hillary Clinton is going to be the woman who breaks the glass ceiling tonight. And how she is the woman who embraces diversity. The best person, he says, to lead this country into the future. Also addressing the crowd later on tonight will be singer Katy Perry and Mr. Kazir Khan. And if you remember, a very uh, emotional man who, whose son was a war hero. He died in Iraq. He uh, served in the U.S. Army. He will be addressing the crowd as well. Back to both of you. Thank you. And we will be back for a complete wrap-up on the Fox 5 News at 10 p.m. Are you Joe Carrie's daughter?
have never been anticipated. Yeah, Steve and Jerry, this was always supposed to be a victory party. Hundreds of people gathered inside the Javits Center, hundreds more gathered outside. But I gotta tell you, this is a nervous, a little nervous room. Nervous people who are gathered inside tonight. Early on, things looked very good for Hillary Clinton. Some of those good returns that came in early. People were cheering, people were exuberant, people were excited. There was electricity in the room. And in the last hour or so, there hasn't been much to cheer about. A few minutes ago, right before we came out, the Jim Hall in Mexico for Hillary Clinton. We heard Jen say that there may be some good news out of Virginia. Certainly, there are little slivers that have come through, but mostly people are looking at the screen and they are wondering just what is going on. The Clinton campaign will talk about some of those early voting numbers over those last two weeks. They thought there was a surge in the two voters that could help the states like North Carolina, Florida, Nevada. They thought that that surge would put them over the top and make those swing states more secure. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Again, there's a rally also outside, and that's where we've seen some of the New York dignitaries. This is the mayor of the Bronx, who will be looking at the South Carolina. The election of Hillary Robert Clinton as our 45th president. America will send a message to all the world about who we are. We will say very clearly no to hatred. No to division, no to intolerance. And again, it's a nervous room here at the Javits Center. Hundreds of people who are gathered inside, plenty of people looking down at their phones, looking up at the streets, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. If things will eventually break in their direction. One key thing here, a bit of good news, they haven't counted all of the votes in some of the big cities in Florida and North Carolina. Potentially some good news for the Democrats, good news for, I guess, they just called the state for the search. You can see behind me there. And again, this is going to be what looks like a long time ahead for the Democrats and for the Clinton campaign. Steve I was certainly in the consensus, all right, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, Donald Trump greeted with a mix of cheers and moves when he voted at PS 59 in Manhattan, just 20 blocks from Trump Tower. Tonight, his headquarters is at the New York Hilton in Midtown, and that's where our Joe Tui is right now. Joe. Hey, Stephen Derry. Yeah, the crowd has really filled up, and you can feel the momentum building in this room. The crowd has also gotten more vocal. They booed when it was announced Hillary Clinton around the state of New York. They cheered for Marco Rubio getting his Senate seat, and of course they cheered very loudly every time Donald Trump picks up a state. And of course the state they're really focusing on is Florida, Florida, Florida. Trump has made it a focus of this race, and it could be the deciding factor tonight. He's made nearly 40 stops in the Sunshine State since, convention, since the convention, and he was tweeting earlier in all caps, Go Florida. Right now he's up by about 40,000 votes there, less than 1%, but it's still too close to call, as we've been mentioning. As for the man himself, here's a picture. It was tweeted out by his daughter, Ivanka. He's not here at the Hilton yet. He's actually watching them church with his family just a couple blocks away across town. No word on when he'll make his way over here. Now it's still 40 in the head. I went to across the swing states trying to make some last-minute case for some voters where the polls haven't closed yet. And one interesting note from an interview one of his surrogates did, we found out that Donald Trump did in write a concession to beat after all that speculation that maybe he wouldn't have he should be lost. I mean, they know the crowd here and the Trump are hoping he doesn't have to use that convention speech tonight. It has picked up a lot. All right, thanks, Joe. We appreciate it. A little couple of hits on that live video, but that's what it is. Okay, well, long lines were a mess all day in Jersey City's District 9. As you see right there, it started early this morning when there was only one voting machine available. Eventually, two more booths were brought over. One voter is blaming the long lines on gentrification and an influx of young people to the area. Um, there are, has been so much development in Jersey City over the past five years, four years, and they didn't plan for this. It's just insane. Well, a representative of New Jersey's superintendent of elections told Fox 5 that they just didn't expect this kind of turnout. Oh, I think long, yeah, long lines of glitches in New York City as well. well Zachary Keish talked to some frustrated voters. He's on the Upper East Side. Zachary. You want to talk politics, the experts tell me politics is what takes you two hours to cast a vote. The ballots are closed here on the Upper East Side now, but two person that I talked to, they all have the same message. we got to find a better way. 
I think the uh, line this morning circled all the way around the city block. Went out to First Avenue, so down this way, along York, up 89th to First, and then we might have even fully connected the whole line. <laughs> Hudson joined the line this morning outside the Yorkville polling cell. In about an hour and change in, he had to go to work. But plenty others stayed. We need some help. We need some of the big technology companies to help make this process easier. People can't spend four hours waiting in line in order to vote. That's too long. We were told that four of six out of the six scanners are down, which to me indicates that New York City needs to do some reform on the electoral process and the machines. New York is on the cutting edge of music, fashion, and culture, but when it comes to voting, it's not much of a trendsetter. It should be easier, particularly because we have good evidence that shows when people have the experience of having to stand in very long lines, they actually become less likely to come out with subsequent wars in the program. David Bertzell, a Marx Dean in Baruch College, tells me the very act of casting a mechanism of hurdles that make it so difficult what we know about these kinds of voting initiatives is that it tends to expand access uh, and actual use of the ballot in uh, lower income communities on the one hand, uh, in black and brown communities on the other hand, and those are typically democratic voters. Uh, that's inimical to the interests, at least the electorate interests, of the Republican-controlled Senate, and that's right now where it's bottled up. 34 states allow only New York is not one of them. Experts say expanding ballot access is important for two reasons. It allows people to plan voting around higher obligation and it takes pressure off the polling system. There's a better way, which is early voting. Uh, a huge number of states have it, and it works, and I've heard this participation is particularly important for folks who have multiple jobs or for students, a lot of people end up getting disenfranchised because of only having one day to vote. Back on the Upper East Side, the lines are moving, and there are perks for the late crew. There are a couple of bills intended to expand access. We'll see if any changes are made between now and the next election cycle. In terms of what happened here tonight on the Upper East Side, the last person went through that door just after 9 o'clock. They tell me, they tell me that people that were in line were able to cast their vote. For now, on the application of the Upper East Side, that's what it's got to be in that way. Thank you. Races in the country happening in North Jersey. I think a look at what's going on in the battle for the state's hotly contested fifth congressional district. And support for the right for women to vote. Now the big tribute at Susan B. Anthony's resting place on the historic on this historic election. Watching the future of the country unfold together. The big election parties going on in our area as people nervously look at their phones in public with their friends. I want to put a
to back up the force of the balance of power in the Senate and other struggling elections very closely tonight. Indeed, here are some of the results in Florida. Fox News is projecting that incumbent Republican Senator Marco Rubio is retaining his Florida Senate seat against Democrat Patrick Murphy. Our Wisconsin Fox News projecting House Speaker Paul Ryan will defend his congressional seat against longshot Democratic challenger Ryan Sol. No surprise there. And let's head to Arizona now. Uh, even though you're seeing zeros on your screen doesn't really mean much. The, uh, Fox News has projected that five-term Republican senator from Arizona, yes, John McCain, has defeated Democrat Ann Kirkpatrick, which was a, a it was big close for a while. It was close. Yeah, it was back back to the back. Back. It was all right, well, visiting hours to uh, Susan B. Anthony's grave in Rochester were extended this evening. Look at the lines. Hundreds of people, mostly women and girls, lined up to place I voted stickers on the grave of the suffrage activists. This happens every year, by the way, but this year it's taken on the meaning, of course, as Americans have the choice of electing a female president for the very first time. Yeah, the deadly shooting that happened near one of the polling sites. Uh, drastic measures to deal with coyotes living near LaGuardia Airport. What officials say had to be done to keep workers, travelers, and people who live nearby safe. We are continuing to keep a very close eye on election 2016.
This is probably the last time we're going to chat here tonight from Tom's River. I'm Brenda Flanagan. This is the Day's Hotel on Route 37 in Tom's River, and we have been live since 8 o'clock watching the returns come in at the Republican, the Ocean County Republican headquarters, uh, where the Republican candidates uh, appeared later, or earlier, sorry, tonight and declared victory. Congressman Tom MacArthur, uh, his first real full term, uh, re-election rather, uh, and he won handily. There are some provisional ballots that still need to be counted, uh, but he won um, and is anticipating going back to, to Washington. Uh, Congressman Chris Smith, who first won re-election in, uh, election in 1980, will be heading back to Washington uh, for his 19th term and is extremely pleased, uh, had his family up here tonight. The uh, local candidates all seem to have won handily in this little swath of red here surrounded by blue New Jersey. Uh, the folks reported that they were energized when they went to the ballots today, uh, that they felt that Donald Trump had struck a chord uh, and it brought people out in droves, heavy, heavy turnout, uh, excited people at the polls, um, they say that there's going to be some um, fences that have to be mended. It was a divisive campaign uh, on the presidential level that reached into people's homes and families. Uh, there's a lot of rancor. There are some things that were said uh, that are going to have to be um, apologized for, maybe, smoothed over, glossed over. Uh, either way, the candidates all said that they're going to get back to work, that they are looking for a compromise and they're going to try to make this work and at this moment there's a little knot of people who are watching the returns come in from across the country uh, at this point donald trump seems to be doing far better than expected so there is some upbeat mood i should say with a few people who are left here but we're going to shut it down for now thank you for watching my name is brenda flanagan NJTV News reporting from Tom's River. Good night. and the Senate.